Madden Football is the home of Super Bowl 56. And this historic matchup is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Bengals and the Rams coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy as it'll be the AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals taking on the NFC champions, the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gordon joined by my good friend Charles Davis. And Charles, it was maybe the most unlikely Super Bowl run we've seen in a long time. What a story. The Bengals had not won a playoff game since January of 1991. 4-11-1 last year, 2-14 the season before that. Bottom line, though, here they are, the AFC champs. And Brandon, this is one of the more remarkable turnarounds in NFL history in recent years. In fact, most of the guys on this team weren't even born the last time they won a playoff game. Although, not that long ago, they had a stretch where they were in the playoffs seemingly every year but couldn't win a playoff game. Now they've gotten that done, they're back in the Super Bowl. And remember, two Super Bowl appearances in their history. Number 16 and 23. Unfortunately, both times they ran into Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers. Meanwhile, the L.A. Rams, they are back in the Super Bowl for the second time in four years. Remember, they lost Super Bowl 53 to the Patriots in Atlanta, 13-3. But here they are trying to be the second team in two years after Tampa Bay last year to win the Super Bowl in their home stadium. And we go back to that Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. And remember, they were an offensive juggernaut at that time. But only put up three points in that game. And they have been a little bit of a tough team to pin down over the last few years. They've had their shares of ups and downs, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But they've always had that great defense, and they're looking to ride that crew to a Super Bowl crown. First and ten, Stafford. Got a man open, it's Tyler Higby. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Here's the first carry of the game for Cam Akers. Not much room to run. Just gets it to the 35 after showcasing his tough running. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. For Charles' first drive here, a little safe completion underneath. Maybe get some rhythm, get your feet wet, so to speak. I agree, and I like it because it's a lot like a basketball game when you're getting started and you pass the ball around so everyone touches it early and gets involved in the game. In this case, it's not just dumping it to a back and he's able to run with the ball, but you get your offensive linemen involved because they get to get out and run and hit people in the open field. Everyone getting their feet wet early. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. The bagel pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Trey Hendrickson able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. Well, it's up for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away.
So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Here come the Bengals. And CD, of course, it's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback. And he's been sensational all season long, but he saved his best work for the playoffs, leading his guys to the AFC Championship a couple of weeks ago. And now he knows what lies ahead. He's going to need to play a near perfect four quarters of football to get his guys to the finish line. going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at about the 32. The former second round pick this is Joe Mixon and able to break one tackle but then quickly brought down but a nice little game. A solid run on first down gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. A nice run here early on it doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And a 42-yard line here brought down there. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football. In that situation, it's almost a tendency breaker. the play fake here's Burrow escaping the pressure right and he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole he'll get three yards on the scramble there in second down now how about that play he took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit throwing again on second down Burrow got his man complete over the middle. That's Boyd. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now Burrow on first down. And that's caught one more time by Boyd. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Here's second and a yard. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. they got a nice little drive brewing right here. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Joe Mixon. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Play action. It's Burrow. Got a man open, it's Chase. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit, do something with the receivers to you know, change up their timing, they're just going to get shredded as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him, all right? <laughs> if as, as a defensive guy, they've got to dump him on his backside a few times, shake things up. Yeah, they're going to need an in-drive adjustment here on this first series. That catch good for only a couple. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. 
To throw again on second down. Burrow. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. It was Vaughn Miller who shot in there to get him down. Enough takes a start job, a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. They'll set up to throw. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. With a first touchdown of this Super Bowl, and a long one at that. And the Bengals are on the board first here in this Super Bowl. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and 10. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw pulled in by Hopkins. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Stafford going to give this to Akers. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a third down coming up. try and run for this with Akers. Akers has got the first down of Insel as they finally run to the man at the 48. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just dropped there. And what I mean by that is that they were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out.
First down, Stafford here. Incomplete. Bryson Hopkins, the intended receiver, and it's second down. In today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups, and they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. Second and ten. Back to throw, Stafford. And that's incomplete. Well, to me, there is no question about the intent there, and I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But he'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Now Stafford. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-bodied tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want to catch the football first. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. The Bengals drive about to get going. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one receiver route, and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And occasionally, we've seen success occur. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Now they go play action now. Burrow. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And this is caught at the 20. And great yardage here all the way deep into Los Angeles territory. A big play there for Cincinnati. If there was one knock on Joe Burrow coming out of LSU, you know, it was arm strength, but kind of put those doubts to rest right there. And what was amazing to me was the fact he was able to get as much on the ball as he did because he was on the run. Normally, when you're on the move like that, you don't expect the ball to go that far. You would think you need your lower body to be involved. That was an all-arm throw. Mixon with a first down carry. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. On the jet sweep, here's Chase. Fights loose. And the nimble footwork gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. 
They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Mixon. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Joe Mixon taking it in for two yards out. And the Bengals continue to look good here in the first half of this Super Bowl. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. And McPherson on for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. to the touchdown. McPherson on to kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Stafford now to throw. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Trey Hendrickson, his second sack of the night. How about that part? His second sack of the game, and that puts him in some pretty good company. 17 guys have had two sacks in the previous 52 Super Bowls, but only three have had the record number of three sacks in this game. And we've got the list here. If he gets another one and everyone behaves nicely, we might just list those out for him. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford. And that's going to be incomplete. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. Third and long at Stafford. They'll get this to Akers out of the backfield. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 
They'll call it a punt of 44 yards. The return was for seven. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 37. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that is incomplete. Wow, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. And Burrow going to be hit and taken down. They got him. Von Miller able to drop him for a loss of a couple. on the clock in the second quarter of this Super Bowl. A reminder coming up at intermission, we'll get highlights in this Super Bowl from Jonathan Coachman and the crew in Orlando for our EA Sports halftime report. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. Back deep, Brandon Powell. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. Stafford on first down. Gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. Not much there, only a yard. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch it, turn up field, and pick up the first down. Looking to throw again on second down. Stafford. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they have panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Now a first down throw. Stafford. He'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. They it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the 50 at Stafford. 
And he'll dump this off to Akers. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Throwing again on second down. Stafford. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. Well, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. He's been the forgotten man in this first half. Not a guy you want to forget. Not only his first catch, first time they've targeted him. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Not because those are the types of plays that he provides. When he does come alive, when they do look his way, not only is it a big catch, it's a first down. And that incompletion breaks a string of five straight connections. And it's second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Here's second and ten. To the air again, Stafford. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Throwing a Stafford. That's into the hands of Akers complete. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. First and ten, Stafford. That's out to the flat for Akers. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the ten. Another catch for him there. This job, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out the backfield any way they can. At that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Took nearly the entire first half, but a first red zone opportunity for him here. They've got a first and ten at the 11. Stafford. And he'll go down. Brought down at the 20-yard line. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So now the Rams send out the field goal team here from the left hash. This from 37. Gay's kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So they do get the three points before they hit halftime. Something to build on, maybe. Yeah, go ahead and raise the banner, right? Go wave the flag. That's good. Got points. And now, as you said, they got something to build on as they get ready for the second half. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Taking it about the one. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line.
The Bengals drive about to get going. And with only nine seconds remaining, with not much time, we'll see how they play this. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. So it's halftime here on Sports Grandest Stage in the Super Bowl. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Cincinnati. And there were a few factors as to why they built this good size advantage, but the rushing numbers were not all that amazing. We'll see if they can pick it up in the second half. Meanwhile, for the Rams, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. These two teams sat through a longer-than-usual 30-minute wait, but we're back in action here in the Super Bowl. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. And I would imagine this is where you have to take stock of the situation, CD, and say, gosh, we're halfway to the Lombardi Trophy. Let's not slow down now. And I like the way you went there. Let's not slow down now because the first half certainly went their way. And I would expect them to continue with that type of a game plan. But you're right. You do think back to Super Bowl 54. 49ers had a double-digit lead in the fourth quarter. Couldn't hold on. So plenty can still happen. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. Open man is Uzama. And they work this well up field across the 45. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we could at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. Yeah, and this defense has had its share of problems getting guys to the ground. And here's another example. They never should have allowed this play to gain as many yards as it did. But poor tackling early in the play led to big yardage after the fact. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. He was brought down by Troy Reeder. Second down and eight. They'll stay on the ground, mixing again, powering forward. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 50 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. 11, 11, 11, 11. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A big connection on that one. 33 yards. Uh, they lulled them to sleep there, so to speak. That was all set up by the running game, wasn't it? Another example of what all offensive coordinators tell us. When the running game's operating, it really opens up the playbook. And that's when they hit them with the play action. And you can see the defenders rushing towards a lot of scrimmage, then scrambling back trying to cover. Couldn't get there in time. Well scripted. They had the big running play, now the big passing play. They're passing here. Joe Burrow dumps it off to Mixon. 
And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. That's how we do it. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Second and goal from the one. Mixon on the toss right. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. That's a nice example of good team defense right there. Ball was snapped at the one-yard line. They knocked him back and caused a loss. But you notice they were trying to find any type of a gap to run through. Wasn't one available, and they stuffed the play right there in the middle of the field. So backed up to the six now. Third and goal. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. And he'll go down. Brought down the 20-yard line. Well, Aaron Donald just so strong they can't block him. And he records the sack. Well, here's where having mobility sometimes can work against you as a quarterback. He thinks he can retreat and outrun the pressure. But that time, they zeroed in on him and took him down for a big loss, partner. A really big loss. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. From the left hash, this from 37. McPherson's kick is good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to so put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. Here's McPherson now to send it away. On the return is Brandon Powell. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Let's go, Let's go. Matthew Stafford and the rest of the Rams offense set to take over once more. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll go again here with Akers. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. Another down a couple of scores. But the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Akers. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 48 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, 
You got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. Stafford popping this forward. It's a jet sweep. A oh, good move. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. And a lot of times, these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here, they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. And just a yard to go here on second down. Now a play fake, and it's Stafford. He's got this to the tight end, Hopkins. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 33. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. On the give, this is Akers. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now it's Stafford. And his throw here is incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. to the 23 here on third. Stafford going to give to Akers on the draw. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He hit his first. Now this one from 48 yards away. And Gay knocks this one through. And a second field goal here gets him back with an 11 now. It's 17-6. to six. So the three points there, and CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. No, oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. 
Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. Working with second and five now. Now Burrow. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. Let's go! Let's go! That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. They'll run on first down. Mixon. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth. to Mixon on first down. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And, oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. Now the Bengals on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Burrow looking to pass. And that is incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And we're at the time of the Super Bowl where, look, they need points, and they need them badly. Trailing here in the fourth quarter as they begin this drive first and 10. Stafford. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit him over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. To the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. To throw is Stafford. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. 
And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. They've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? From the 50, Stafford. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big play that time through the air. 31 yards. They're still looking for their first touchdown of the game. And for a second, I thought they had it right there. But looking on the sideline, it's finally good to see nods of approval. as a welcome sign of life that this offense needed. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now Stafford. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. B.J. Hill, what an effort from him on that play. Big tackle for a loss of 11. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford. He's going to wind up and air it out. And all it will be intercepted. Cheetah Bay Aluzier with a pick. And the Bengals are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. And they set themselves behind the chains, tried to get it all back in one play, and it backfired. Didn't it feel like a pitcher working his way into a 3-0 count, right? You're behind. What do your coaches always tell you? Get it back one pitch at a time. In this case, they tried to get it back right away, and it didn't work out. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And they have been the better of the two sides to this point with a two-score lead, fourth quarter of this Super Bowl, and the Lombardi Trophy within reach as they start this drive first and 10. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. From the 25 on second down, Burrow. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, partner, I think the defensive fellas got the memo, and they decided to cover him on that play. Yeah, he's already up over 100 yards in this game. They tried a deep shot, couldn't get him. Yeah, when you've had that much success, finally someone said, let's try and put a stop to it and put people on him. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to reel him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it breaks up fourth down. The third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
Getting set to go again, Matthew Stafford trots back onto the field. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. But it's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors, yet still play perfect football. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete here. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Stafford now to throw. That's complete to his running back, Jefferson. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Stafford. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Sam Hubbard able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford. Now that'll be caught by Cobb. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season. They got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. On third down, here's a run by Akers. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. You have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. If they're going to have a shot in this Super Bowl, they're going to need this one on fourth down. Desperation time for Stafford on fourth down. They'll let it go deep for Beckham. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. But they can thank their defense for another stop. And now, look at the score, where they've got the football. They're looking pretty good. They're looking excellent because now you're thinking to yourself, let's just take some time off the clock. Work it down. And, of course, you put another touchdown on the board, you pretty much say bye-bye to this one. Play calling here can be a little bit more conservative because of the lead. A little bit more conservative. The biggest thing, everyone understands how to get the ball downfield and how to stay in bounds and make sure the clock keeps running. On first down, Nixon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind that it'll also stop the clock with the two-minute warning. And he's 
going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Two minutes left to play in this football game watch here on watch EA out. Sports. Hey, watch the slant. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. And flags come as he gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it. Brings up four. That's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. This from 54 yards away. McPherson's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. McPherson now to send it away. From the end zone, here comes Brandon Powell. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So Matthew Stafford in the offense. Down by two touchdowns. A little under a minute 50 remaining. They've come so far this year, but they need two quick scores late in this Super Bowl. On first down, Stafford here. Looking underneath, he's got Akers. And he's able to get up here to the 26. They'll contain him to just four, second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle him almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Stafford's throw complete there to Beckham. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottle him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again at Stafford. Into the hands of Beckham. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. From the 50 at Stanford. Oh, he's going to go for it all. 
toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run for it with Akers. And a great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. First 15 at the 41 yard line. Stafford on first down. And this is going to be incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Stafford. Going up top for Cup. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Stafford. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. They snap it to Stafford. One last shot at the end zone. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that may write a finish to this Super Bowl. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Bengal Nation rejoice. Cincinnati has given you the Super Bowl title. And to the Super Bowl champions, they etch their name forever in NFL immortality. That's pretty phenomenal right there. It actually gave me chills just to hear you <laughs> say that because immortality forever and ever. When you look in the record books, you'll see this team, you'll see their picture, that your name will be a part of it. That's got to be an incredible feeling because it's been a long journey to get there, and now they get a chance to enjoy it.